What's going on? It's Suk and I am back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showcasing the results that I got when I ran a number of different tests on the brand new M4 powered MacBook Pro. We are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. So if you are new around here, then I must ask you to hit that subscribe button, clicking the bell to be notified when I upload any of my up and coming videos. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So first things first, I do want to quickly talk about the spec for this MacBook model that I was testing in today's video. So the model that I tested has a 10 core CPU, a 10 core GPU, 24 gigabytes of unified memory, along with one terabyte of SSD based storage. The full spec for this model and where you can go to purchase it will be left down below in this video's description. So the first benchmarking application which I ran on this MacBook was a slightly older version of Geekbench, Geekbench 4. And when running Geekbench 4, I started off by running the CPU test in which I got a single core score of 8,549 along with a multi-core score of 37,613. I also ran the Geekbench 4 compute test to test the OpenGL and Metal performance of the M4 on this MacBook Pro. So when running the OpenGL test, I got a score of 137,500 and when running the Metal test, I got a score of 124,460. I also ran a slightly newer version of Geekbench, Geekbench 5 and started off with the CPU test and got a single core score of 1731 along with a multi-core score of 9184. I also wanted to further test the 10 core GPU so I ran the compute test through Geekbench 5 once again testing the OpenGL and Metal performance. Now when running this particular test I got a score of 34,951 along with a Metal score of 38,785. I also ran the latest set of tests from Geekbench under Geekbench 6 and when running the CPU test I got a single core score of 3795 along with a multi core score of 15109 and when it comes to running the compute tests I got OpenGL scores of 38012 whereas I got Metal scores of 57931. I then wanted to further test the 10 core CPU within the M4 chip which has a combination of 4 performance and 6 efficiency cores. So I then ran a number of different versions of Cinebench starting off with Cinebench R20. Now when running this test I got a CPU score of 3626 and when it comes to running a slightly newer version of Cinebench, Cinebench R23, I got a single core score of 2167 along with a multi-core score of 13,866 which gives us a ratio of 6.4. I also ran the latest version of Cinebench, Cinebench 2024 and got a single core score of 172 along with a multi-core score of 823 which gives us a ratio of 4.79. And also through Cinebench 2024, I wanted to further test the 10 core GPU of the M4 chip. And when running their GPU test, I got a score of 4,617. The next benchmarking application which I ran on this MacBook Pro was GFX Bench Metal. Now GFX Bench runs a number of different tests which I ran both on and off screen and these range from both higher and lower levels of intensity. Now in the interest of saving some time I have calculated the average for these results but as always you will see each individual result. So when it comes to the higher graphically intense tasks, I got an average frame rate of 274.89 frames per second. And when it comes to the lower level graphically intense tasks, I got an average frame rate of 331.17 frames per second. So I then wanted to further test the M4 chip in this MacBook Pro. So I ran a number of different graphics tests from 3 d Mark, And the first of these was their wildlife test, which as standard pretty much always maxes out this on all MacBook models. And with the MacBook Pros in particular, we normally see a frame rate of around 120 and there was no change here with it averaging 119.9 frames per second. 
and when it comes to running the wildlife stress test, the best score that this MacBook Pro achieved was 20,037 and the lowest was 20,026, which is basically identical with 0.1% difference between these two scores. The next test that I ran was the Wildlife Extreme Test and when running this it scored 9,369 with it scoring an average frame rate of 56.1 frames per second. I also ran the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test and the best score that this MacBook Pro achieved was a score of 9,332 whilst its lowest was a score of 9,131. So when running the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test we see around a 2.1% dip in performance after running this test for a consecutive 20 times. I also wanted to test the improved ray tracing cores found within the M4 so I ran the Solar Bay test and when running this particular test it scored 16,089 with it scoring an average frame rate of 61.2 frames per second. I then ran the Solar Bay stress test which runs the Solar Bay test an additional 20 times when running this test the highest score or best score that this MacBook Pro achieved was 16,061 whilst its lowest was 15,370 which is around a 4.3% dip in performance. I then ran the Steel Nomad light test and when running this particular test on this MacBook Pro it scored 4010 with it scoring an average frame rate of 29.7 frames per second. And when it comes to running the Steel Nomad light stress test the best score that this MacBook Pro achieved was a score of 4049 whilst the lowest score was 3787 which is conversely around a 6.6% decrease in performance. I then ran the age at disk speed test and got write speeds of 4,927 megabytes per second and read speeds of 1,436 megabytes per second. However, things were a little different when running the Blackmagic disk speed test with this MacBook Pro achieving write speeds of 3,332.1 megabytes per second along with read speeds of 2,910.4 megabytes per second. I also ran a Wi-Fi network speed test and got download speeds of 553 megabits per second along with upload speeds of 94.2 megabits per second. I then ran Novabench 2. Now Novabench is a good general benchmark as it tests all aspects of the machine from its CPU and GPU along with system memory and storage. Now the combined score that I got when running this test was a score of 1214. So I had expected that score to be almost double that at around 2500 and it wasn't and now I've taken a look at this and it's clear to see that the CPU test failed to run through Novabench 2 whereas when it comes to running Novabench 2 CPU test through the M4 Mac Mini I got scores closer to 2500 with around 1300 of that coming from the CPU alone. I also ran the V-Ray test and got a score of 8,364. When testing the M4's web-based capabilities, I ran the Antutu HTML browser benchmark and got a score of 99,964. And when it comes to running the Speedometer 2.0 test, the highest score that this MacBook Pro achieved was a score of 813. However, when it comes to running the latest version of Speedometer, Speedometer 3.0, we see this MacBook Pro score 47.5. I then timed how long it would take to complete a render using both the CPU and GPU across the classroom and the BMW scenes. So when rendering the classroom scene using the CPU, it took 6 minutes and 20 seconds to complete. However, when it comes to using the GPU, it completed this in 59 seconds. When it comes to rendering the BMW scene using the CPU, it completed it in 2 minutes and 40 seconds and it took 25 seconds to complete using the GPU. I then wanted to see how this MacBook Pro's 10 core GPU would perform so I then ran the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark across a number of different resolutions and graphic settings. So when running the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark at the native resolution of this MacBook Pro, that's 3024 by 1964, and keeping the graphic settings to high, it rendered 3208 frames with it averaging 20 frames per second. And when dropping the graphic settings to medium, it this time rendered 3299 frames with it scoring an average frame rate again of 20 frames per second. 
dropping the resolution slightly down to 2560 by 1600 and increasing the graphic settings to high we now see this macbook pro render 4369 frames with it scoring an average frame rate of 27 frames per second when we drop the graphic settings down to medium, we find that this MacBook Pro now renders 4,509 frames with it averaging 28 frames per second. When dropping the resolution down to 1920 by 1200, which is essentially a full HD resolution at this aspect ratio and keeping the graphic settings to high, when running the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, we find that this MacBook Pro with its 10 core GPU rendered 6807 frames, scoring an average frame rate of 43 frames per second. When dropping the graphic settings to medium, we find that this MacBook Pro rendered 6,970 frames, with it now scoring an average frame rate of 44 frames per second. And finally, lowering the resolution to 1200 by 854, keeping the graphic settings to high, we find that it now renders 10,818 frames, with it scoring an average frame rate of 68 frames per second. And when dropping the graphic settings to medium, we find that it now renders 11,293 frames, with it now averaging a frame rate of 71 frames per second. Using Final Cut Pro, I then timed the export of a 5 minute 23 second video file at both Full HD and 4K resolutions with background rendering turned off to H.264. So when exporting the Full HD project, we find that the M4 in this MacBook Pro completes it in 35 seconds. And when it comes to exporting the 4K video project at a resolution of 3840 by 2160, that this MacBook Pro is able to complete it in 2 minutes and 9 seconds. I then ran the Unigen benchmarking tools Heaven and Valley benchmarking tests at a range of resolutions. Now starting off with the Heaven test at a resolution of 1515 by 982 we find that this MacBook Pro is able to score 3079 with it scoring an average frame rate of 122.2 frames per second. When lowering the resolution very slightly to 1440 by 900 we can see that this MacBook Pro scores 3375 with it coming in with an average frame rate of 134 frames per second. When running the Valley test at the same resolutions, starting off at 1515 by 982, we find that it scores 5268, with it coming in with an average frame rate of 125.9 frames per second. And when running at 1440 by 900, we find that it scores 5336, with it scoring an average frame rate of 127.5 frames per second. I then timed how long it would take to reduce the noise in 100 GH5 raw images using Adobe Lightroom. Now to my surprise, it completed it in 42 minutes and 23 seconds. And when it came to sharpening 50 iPhone 15 Pro Max 48 megapixel Pro Raw images, it took 15 minutes and 49 seconds to complete. With this particular M4 chip in this MacBook Pro, it has 24 gigabytes of unified memory. And well, I wanted to put that to the test using Logic Pro to see how many tracks it would be able to hold. So using the Logic Pro benchmark, I found that this MacBook Pro was able to comfortably play 111 tracks. I also ran the Puget benchmark for both Photoshop and DaVinci Resolve. Now when running this for Photoshop, I got an overall score of 10,975, a general score of 104, along with a filtered score of 116. And when it comes to running the Puget benchmark for DaVinci Resolve, it got an overall score of 6,151. So there you have it. You can see the overall times that it would take to complete certain tasks and what the overall performance is going to be like with the M4 chip with its 24 gigabytes of unified memory and its 10 core CPU and 10 core GPU. Of course, I am going to be uploading a number of videos comparing this particular MacBook Pro to the previous generation models. So it's going to be interesting to see how the performance has improved over the years. Stay tuned as of course I will be uploading a video very soon showcasing what it was like to play a handful of games on this particular system. So be sure to subscribe, smacking that bell to be notified when I upload that video. But hey, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.
Take care and have a good one.